Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai Guy here. How are we all doing today? I hope we all had a safe and productive week. All right, today's video is going to be on how to cut Eubank vent piping. The concentric piping, which I go over quite often, and it's the type of piping that if you want to use the single pipe, on a Renai unit, so on a V or an RL series, you'll be using this pipe only, the concentric piping, pipe within a pipe, and on the uh, Sensei series, the RU, the RUR series, the condensing boiler series, you could use either this pipe or others like it, smaller, or the two inch PVC. So I do get a lot of questions on when they want to run the concentric venting, what pieces they need, and what do they have to do to cut it. So the pipe comes in 10 inch, 19 inch, 39 inch, vertical termination, horizontal termination. Uh, the horizontal termination comes with an elbow. Then you can buy elbows separately and then boxes of 45 245s. Now, if you go back in my video, you'll actually see some of them. But with this pipe, you have to cut it a specific way, a very important way. Now, just to go over quick, this is for non-condensing, as you can see, and I already cut some off so you could see a good amount of it. It is an aluminum inside and it has this white polymer outside. For condensing, so the box is going to be marked for condensing, units only. The inside is going to be a gray plastic because condensing water, the cabin back is corrosive and it will eat the poop out of this one. So that's why this has to, is this gray polymer. Again, all of your piping is going to come with three little quarter by half inch kind of sheet metal screws that you're going to screw into right here. Once the pipe is together, you're going to screw right here. So you're going to put one, two, and one third around the uh, circumference of the pipe. All right, how do you cut this? What do you need? Well, of course you need pipe, ruler. You're going to need some type of a deburring tool. You're going to need a rotary tool with a couple of different stone bits. You're going to need a pocket knife some blue tape, a magic marker, some emery or sandpaper. You're going to need some sawzall blades, <clears throat> a hammer and a screwdriver, of course a sawzall, and I wouldn't recommend this one. I'm going to suffer with this one, but I would use a smaller sawzall, which we do and a wrap around. These is construction paper that I actually cut three inch strips off either side, but I leave them in my, in, I, I carry them in my briefcase in the 12 inch. As you can see, when I put it together, I mark an arrow that tells me that this is my straight edge. So I'm cutting it from the left and the right of the piece of paper. And then when I'm ready, I tape them together with blue tape. <clears throat> and then this table, this is the DeWalt folding table we carried on our truck, and this is the exact. This is pretty, this is exactly what we use to cut, except it, the monster sawzall we end up using, we use the 12 volt Milwaukee sawzall. Okay, so how do you cut this? All right, there is an engagement inside of the pipe. And if you see this little tabs right here, there's three of them, it goes back 
and I marked it here on the actual pipe. It goes back from the rubber gasket to where this, this is the, where the white pipe engages, one and a quarter inches. Okay? So, when you're measuring, just say this, is, this was a 19 inch piece. This is a 19 inch piece. So, again, when I, I'm showing you with the hardest because of the metal, but this procedure is exactly the same with the plastic and whatever length, the 10, the 19, or the 39. So say we want to, we, we have to take this 19 and turn it into, let's just say, let's, let's just make a number up here, um, a 14, which I do have a mark on there right now. All right, so we're going to measure from, let me just lock this tape. We're going to measure from that dot and mark our 14, okay? Now that's going to be our piece. So let's just make sure we're in camera here. We're going to need to rip off a couple of pieces of blue tape. And it doesn't matter, you could use the one inch tape, blue tape. This happens to be, I think, two inch. That's all I had here. Then what you want to do, let's just see, make sure, okay. You want to get this on the mark, wrap this around until the, the straight part of it meets. Don't worry about the other side because the other side, you know, you just cut with a scissor. And then tape it around. Put some tape around it. There you go. Now the wrap around is on. Now you made yourself a perfect circle. Now, if for some reason you don't have a wraparound to make, what you could do is you could do multiple. Remember, this end is going to be perfectly, you know, round, flat. So you can measure back to 14, like just say we're going to go with this. And that is three inches. You can just keep going back three inches every two inches and make a mark, a tick mark, and then fill in those tick marks. But the wrap around is easier. Then you just take your pen and just follow the, can we see? Yep. Follow this around. Remember, you don't have to be perfect as long as it's around so there is your so let's peel this off and if you do it right you probably can get away with using this wrap around quite a few times but it's it's construction paper you just I, I keep like six pieces so I can do three so there is your circle all right now you do not want to cut this straight through the inside now let me grab this one because like I said this is my test piece my show piece the inside as you can see here is a half inch longer than this white outside and that's the way that this has to be so what you need to do is you need to drop cut each individual piece. Now, I did try this Milwaukee grinder tool, which we carry on the truck. It makes a little bit too large of a kerf cut. I just tried it, just to see, and I would have suggested it, but it makes too much of a kerf cut, so it's taking too much of the plastic off. So let's just do this and just be, and take your time with it. Don't need to rush it. And you want to drop cut. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it does have to be clean. And you'll know when you hit the pipe, you'll see it ding a little bit. But just drop cut it. Let's take a little bit of time. 
Okay. So now your is cut. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned you also need a compressor. Because you you need to blow this out really good. You don't want any particles back into the fan. Alright, so now we're gonna worry about other tools in a minute. So now you want to mark Now you want to mark from the white back a half an inch. So just take your ruler and just give it a mark. A half an inch. Okay, so you see here, you are now one half of an inch from the white. The silver sticking up. Now, I'm going to show you what you could do to remove the inside of this, and that's why you need the screwdriver and the hammer. Sometimes the hammer. You don't necessarily always need the hammer. This is a little bit more difficult than just the white one. It's a little bit more difficult to get out, but it'll come out. And I'll show you how easy the uh, plastic one is. And you've got to be, you know, gentle with this. There we go. So now you can remove the inner part from the white part. And you can do the same thing with the plastic, but the plastic doesn't have those black tabs. You just give it a shot and it comes out. It holds on by that tab and that tab say I cut it I cleaned it you go back hit it and who's your uncle Bob this is being held on by these three black tabs but if you're patient and you get it nice work it around it comes off alright so now since you got the white already Go around, around, around. You want to deburr it. Just be patient. Go around. Get it all nice and deburred. Take your sandpaper. Sand it. Sand it. So get get the white done. Get it done with. If you want, you could take your knife get that all off, then take your compressor, blow it out, blow it out, blow it out, blow it out, blow it out. So now your white's done. You want this nice and clean. Now you want to take your Dremel and you want to give it a little bit of a chamfer. Plus, if you find you have any high spots, you can take it off with the Dremel. Okay, so now you compressor blow it blow it blow it blow it blow it now your white is done now you want to do your silver or the um, plastic take your wrap around put it on your piece Go around, now this one we're going to try a little better wheel on another, 
then go make your circle and yes it is messy you're going to get white and silver dust all over the place so when you do it make sure you do it like outside somewhere where it's not inside and going to get all over the people's house so now you have your wrap around in your circle around the silver so let's try something this is actually going to be a test I have a carver on the wheel on the Milwaukee M12 cutoffs tool dust it bounces around too hard I wouldn't do it so let's just go with the sauce hole now this you can just cut straight through Debar it. Get it with this sandpaper and then change wheels now if you don't have a motor tool you can use a file Now this is what I'm sh what you're seeing is like the exact amount of time minus say 5 minutes off this because I would have my son here actually holding it and stuff like that and we wouldn't be messing with such a big sawzall. So, but again, you're going to most likely cut one or two of these pieces. Be patient and slow because it's very important to have this correctly cut so that the engagement inside of the pipe is correct so you're not mixing the gas and coming back around and having the fan suck it back into the burner using carbon monoxide to re to, uh, use it as air for combustion okay so compressor Blow it out. Blow it all out. Okay, make sure that there's no of the metal dust in the gasket. So now your pipe is cut. Run your finger around it. Make sure it's nice and smooth because remember this end 
is what's getting pushed into another end of this of another side of this pipe right here so you want to make sure this has no burrs on it as you can see I am running my finger around this real hard and I'm not cutting myself so you do not want to be able to cut into this gasket the same with this end this end here is going into here on the opposite end you don't want to have um, sharp edges then push this through get this on the table and pop it in there you go half inch out it's all the way in and now take your compressor again and if you have a, a like a shop rag blow it out blow it out blow it out Blow it out, blow it out, blow it out, blow it out. The compressor is off. I didn't want it to make noise. Now, on some of the bigger pieces, like the 39, there's going to be a holder piece in here, like at least two. A pl they're plastic, almost look like a star. And what it does is it goes over this piece, and there's one little leg, one little leg, one little leg. It almost kind of resembles what's right there. And what it does is it holds this from jumping around. A 19 or a 10, because as you can see, there's not in here. Now, this is a full 19. Came out of a box. See, there's nothing in that. It just moves around. So when you're pushing this, I'm just going to demonstrate. When you're pushing this in, you see how much I, the center has engaged. But you see how much of the outer is still there? That's why that's got to be a half an inch. It's got to be deburred. It does not have to be perfect. You don't have to be, uh, you know, um, a piano builder. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be a half inch bigger, and it has to be as round as you can get it, and deburred, and no, any nothing sharp on the edges, and it'll work really fine. So that's the way it should look. So now we turn the 19 into, we, let's get that little dot again, where is it? So we turn the 19 into a 14. Okay, we turn the 19 into a 14. And that's it. And you do that with all. Now, what I would recommend is if you have to cut a 10, and we have, you could do it. It's 10 inches is very difficult, especially if you're cutting like two inches off of it, three inches off of it. There's not a lot there to hold. I do highly recommend having someone there with you, a helper, to hold this pipe. All right, as you can see, it can be done in an entire video, short amount of time. A lot of it is me explaining it, but if someone was here to hold this, and especially if you're doing the plastic, which as you know is a lot easier, you can, it can be done. Now, you can do this with a hacksaw, all right? You could do this with a fine tooth hacksaw. You're not going to take a razor knife and cut into the plastic. No, you're not. You're going to end up slipping and cutting yourself. It just, it's very, it's thick. The plastic is pretty thick. And remember, this plastic is the same as that plastic on, on the condensing. So, uh, you can take um, a hacksaw and just go around the line, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, and then a hacksaw, fine blade to cut the um, metal. Take a little longer time, but it can be done. So here's the the two ends. Okay, just a half inch bigger. Now that one actually, this is is a little bit bigger because that test piece is the piece that I show of a person that actually has cut the pipe just straight through, like you're cutting a piece of wood on a miter saw. Boom, straight through, and. It was sucking the carbon monoxide back into the burner. Brand new unit. They didn't know why. They called me. I went down as soon as I heard it. 
Well, we got to take the vent apart, and there it was. So we ended up putting a new 19, well, recutting it to whatever it needed, and the thing worked. So I kept it and used it as a demo piece, but I use it now to show you how to cut. Okay? So that's what that is. That's how you do it. Very simple. Um, just take your time. Okay, YouTube? So um, I'll put all of this in the description below. And as you can see, it is quite dusty. So again, I highly recommend if you're doing it in the garage, you know, fine. But do it. I, we do it outside, back of the truck. We take our measurement, we do it outside. But if you have an interior, you're going to put a lot of silver and white uh, plastic dust all over the place. So do it outside. And yes, wear safety glasses. I, these glasses are, I buy them as safety glasses. And matter of fact, on my other channel, when I saw a wood project, I always say, shop safety, hearing protection, and safety glasses. I wear mine all the time. But <laughs> I forget with this channel. But yes, you should be wearing safety glasses um, and if you want hearing protection. Okay, YouTube. Again, I got the, and let me get the dry erase board. I have Renai Guy stickers. So if you want a Renai Guy sticker, just send me your contact info, your mailing address, uh, my email, it will be below. You have a question, keep them coming, keep them coming. Um, again, put the question in the comment, but send me an email because again, I apologize for those of you that have sent me email, uh, excuse me, comments through YouTube. A lot of them I cannot see. I can, well, I can see them, but I can't. It comes out in my phone as an email, but when I go to reply to you, it's not there. And I've noticed that they do show up months later. And months later is too late to answer that question. So please enter the comment in an email and send it to me, and then I will answer. You can put a comment in, but put it in an email, especially if it's something important. All right? Again, I'd like to thank all of your comments of those that I've helped you. Um, I greatly appreciate um, the um, comments that you've been sending either via email or um, in the comments on YouTube. And I'd like to thank all of the subscribes, all the likes. Um, uh, if you want, again, every Saturday I post a video. P press that little ding-dong thing up there, as they say. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not that YouTube savvy. I just know how to download the video and what to, what to show you and what's important. But I know if you hit that little ding-dong thing, it'll notify you that my video is, at, is out. But um, just every Saturday, I'll be posting one. So, all right, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that video. Again, everything will be, all of the tools that I've used will be in the comments below. And um, I hope you enjoy your endless hot water. And I will see you next Saturday on the next video. Okay? You all be safe out there. And I'll see you next week on the next video. Bye-bye now.